players who were suspended from the quarterfinal, Onana, Kanabik and Mbu. And they join seven others who played. Sadly, Roger Muir has decided that we are not to see him. He has declined a place among the substitutes. But Akeke was a substitute that night in Naples, and he came on to score a goal which seemed to have ended England's World Cup hopes. Until, of course, Gary Lineker stepped forward to score two penalties. The referee from the Netherlands, who didn't have a representative in the World Cup, is John Blankenstein. Certainly a good atmosphere on a bitterly cold night. And it should perhaps be pointed out, as Graham Taylor said before the match, that England are expected to perform in temperatures close to 100. So, in a way, the boot is on the other foot this evening. That's Kunde, the man who scored from the penalty spot in Naples. Different goalkeeper this evening. Bell has taken over from Nkono. It's on by Fagal. Right for right for Lineker. That's a good block by Onana. Good ball out from the uh, England defence by Mark Wright. Getting into the action. Bounds on the near edge of the six yard area. Headed down by Kunde. Collected well by Pierce. They're queuing up. It'll be a corner if it goes, and it does. Aguirre a little disappointed. Trevor Stephen. Test for Bell, which he's more than equal to. Plays his football in France with Bordeaux, who was thought to be the first choice in Italy, but lost out to Nkono. Mark White, you remember, ended that match, the quarter-final, with six stitches in a cut above the eyebrow. come on as a player since appearing in Italy. Pierce for the cross. And the header down was by Brian Robson. Captain in England for the 64th time and making a typical run, not being picked up. Maybe a little disappointed. He didn't get slightly more power in that. The classic Brian Robson header headed it down, and actually Bell did well to adjust because uh, it's a nasty ball for a goalkeeper to, to handle, just skidding in front of you, and it could easily have squirmed through his hand. Fede lost out to Trevor Stephen, who was just blocked by Onana. Not untypical. We're quite happy to put bodies in the way. As I said, Trevor, they were both the cabaret act and the bouncers, weren't they? Well, that was a, a typical piece of Cameroon defending, really. Uh, whenever a, a player sort of runs one against one and, and tries to take on a defender and they've actually wrong-footed and going past them, they just block them off and uh, are quite happy to concede the free kick. As you can see, Trevor Stephen dispossession the defender and really he makes no effort to get out of his way once Trevor Stevens has touched it past him and quite happy to give away the free kick and uh, lengthy treatment. White is forward. Taken to it by uh, Pagal. Lineker, feel for handball. Referee says accidental by Omanbeek. He was the only one to see the danger. And I 
don't think without him that uh, Lineker would have been offside. Because uh, Tato seemed to me to be at least level with him. Robson, Gascoigne, and here's White, watched it over his head, prepared to take his man on, and lost to him. So Keke, we've had the first ten minutes, they are fairly promising, second shot for handball, not given. Stephen. Lineker. Stephen. Had a good start, Trevor Stephen. Walker. Pierce. Farms going out to the left ahead of him. Right is further forward. Onana has gone with him. Lineker in the middle, Mark Rivewelle. Plenty of England players forward. Chateau now is the marker for Barnes. Pierce. Gascoigne. Lovely turn. Inside out. Chateau is still the marker. Pierce. This is good stuff from England. But there was a stumble at the start of that from Stuart Pierce, and it actually cost him everything because from that moment onwards he wasn't in control of the ball. There's uh, Paul Gascoigne doing one of his uh, famous turns, just toe-ending it, then past the defender, deciding he's not going to really get a crossing, turns back out and really waiting for Stuart Pierce to join, and then it broke down. White and Pierce a bit close to each other. And now they've got a foot there, good head by Stephen. Stephen again, and again, good try. Everything that he's done has been progressive so far. Always looking for the opening. And all reports, he's in very good form for Glasgow Rangers. At least was until he was out with a hamstring injury. Only came back at the weekend. But he's clearly sharp. And a little unlucky. Didn't quite get the finish he was hoping for. Kunde. A kick game. Tato.
Little smile from Gary Lineker. England have the lead in the 21st minute. Good cross by uh, Trevor Stephen. Beautiful climb by Wright. Lineker took on the goalkeeper and the defender. The goalkeeper played him. The referee absolutely correct the point to the spot. And this is how it all finished. Pretty straight again. And Kona might have told him about that. But there's no question that uh, it was a penalty. Good play by Trevor Stephen out wide. And as you say, Ian Wright jumped, showed good spring to get a header. And really, Gary, Gary Rinnick got there first before Bell. And uh, Bell came in almost with a defensive tackle, caught his standing leg, and that put him off balance and put it into the side net. No question, a penalty. 1 0, and let's see if uh, the Cameroons get a little bit more adventurous. England, for the record, took the lead four minutes earlier than they did in Naples. 21st to 25th. Back again to Gascoigne, yes. And here's Wright. It's a corner. good goalkeeper and on the penalty I wonder what would have happened had he stood still he went off first left and then right and the ball was almost exactly straight and Gary Lineker moving on to goal number 38 for England on his 62nd international appearance Keke, a long way for Tato to run. Huh. Well, is that Paul Hardy or Brave? He put his head in, played it perfectly legitimately. That's a difficult one again for Bell. And growing confidence of Ian Wright. go well, the goalkeeper looking for a cross had to come back quite a fair way and there is Roger Miller sitting with uh, Massing on his right Barnes certainly had a good look that time that's going Missed the last match against the Republic of Ireland. Missed Saturday's game for Spurs. But has picked up the international temper. And who doubted it? Mark Wright making a late forward run. Pierce looking for pace to get past Tato and does well. Robson thought that was going to fall for his left. Dixon. Gascoigne. Lineker. The crowd won a penalty. The referee was well placed. And the intent then surely was to play the ball by the defender. a good tackle by the defender there and it just ricocheted off Gary Lineker pulled him down but uh, definitely got the ball first Stephen Barnes Stephen for whom this is cap number 30 there's Walker at 27 consecutively Barnes did well to find that Referee has blown the whistle. And the attention is required.
Lana Beer looks as if he might be going off. Uh, stretch is coming on. And if, and if you look at uh, his left knee, he's had a strapping round all the game, and I suspect that that has been aggravated in a, a sort of clumsy looking tackle, which he appeared off ballast when he gave, gave the foul away, and uh, it looks as if he's going to have to go on. Here, as you see, he comes in to make the tackle on John Barnes, and this is standing foot just gets sucked underneath him his, his knee and I'm sure it's that strapped left knee that is causing the problem well, that's certainly unfortunate for Cameroon and the substitution is made and Thomas Libby played all the 120 minutes against England Pretty close to half time. Pierce. Dixon. Stephen. White moves away to the middle. Lineker got a knock on the nose and couldn't get up enough for the nod down. Anana. Zonana and Mambiek seeing very little of the ball forward which has been the case of Cameroon throughout the half they only had one shot and that was way wide of the mark David Seaman a virtual spectator and at the other end Gary Lineker scoring the one goal which divides the teams after he had been fouled by the goalkeeper Bell half time England 1 Cameroon 0 warm reception for England as they came out for the second half and the crowd looking for some more goals from the home side I just wonder whether we can hope for Cameroon to be a little more adventurous or whether they will continue to play to keep the score down and retain respectability Dixon White intended as a pass to being the captain by Robson and that would be disappointing to the supporters of Ian Wright had rather more time then than he took and he'd be disappointed with that and the Cameroon team unhappy that they were invited here in February it's a difficult to understand why they didn't make the point a bit earlier and ask for an April date Maybe they could be thought of for a future Rouse Cup competition. Right, he was being pulled then by Anana, and the free kick has been given. No, it hasn't, but it should have. Stephen. That suggests that the pitch has hardened a little bit is not surprising temperature must have dropped a couple of degrees and Wambiek and Fede the odd moment of low skill but Cameroon players really not going forward with any great desire well, they've got plenty forward here they've got six up now seven that's a free kick against Tato his action was a little bad tempered Walker. Aguero's challenge from behind. Referee comes to have a word. Right. 
right. Bubbled a bit, but he kept control. Oman Beek. Again, it's slowed up. Tato. a poor cross and so one of nine players in the side play their football at home and the uh, squad that is that will have hurt a bit and the referee getting a bit cross and I'm not surprised he's getting a bit cross but he's not getting uh, any less lenient than he has been because I think really that's three in a row and uh, at some stage the yellow card will have to surface 13 times in the World Cup and two sendings off against Cameroon. And the man who passed the ball back there, Oman Beek, was the first player to score in the World Cup. First of 115 came in the tournament. Pearson for Gunn. Far by Pierce. A smile from Graham Taylor. But he must be disappointed that uh, Cameroon side aren't coming out to play. Coming big. Dixon and it should be said there are one or two in the crowd making noises which will very soon when it becomes law have them in considerable trouble and not before time a crowd incidentally of 61,075 Mbu Libby gave it away Lineker Right is in the middle, but there are three to cover. And Tato. And put it away as right waited in hope behind and applauded the cross. Good covering up by the Cameroon captain. Rather more of his style than we saw in attack a few moments ago. Corner kick being watched by the England goalkeeper standing in the centre circle. And he's got a back leg. And Lineker and Wright went together. And Lineker is the scorer. It's his second. A goal in the 62nd minute. And had so many men over. Got a back flick from right, and it was the right foot of Lineker that found the touch. Maybe Ian Wright a little disappointed, because had it not done so, the Crystal Palace player would have scored. As it is, it's a second goal for Lineker. And a minor curiosity, the goal coming. As I said in the 61st minute, it was at that point in Naples but Cameroon drew level from the penalty spot. But this is a totally different match. And on this occasion, no more than Cameroon deserve. You know, they've been sitting back there, and that was really the perfect near post corner. Mark Wright just getting up, clipping off the top of his head. He's so dangerous during the World Cup in those situations. Of course, uh, scored a vital goal as well, didn't he, against Egypt. And really, on, on that occasion now, given the second goal, and hopefully England can just relax that a little bit more, push one or two men forward and perhaps get a, a third and 
and really showed Cameroon uh, what a disappointment they've been just coming here to defend. Manbeek, Barnes has got a foot in, Pagal, going nowhere fast there, right, cleanly won by Onana, and a sudden surge from the Africans, this is Manbeek, and the corner conceded by Des Walker. moving into the six yard area doesn't reach him yeah, having won a corner you thought they could have found a better one than that Levy Anana Pagal Dixon the far want more from England Stephen Lineker will certainly be looking for a hat trick positive spell from the African team ended by Wright Gascoigne John Barnes space behind if he wants to take him on but he doesn't at least not on the outside Kunde Robson just going not a good challenge by Mbou who's been but a shadow of his Italian self this could be said of the entire team Hans wanting to make a substitution Steve Hodge coming on to replace Paul Gascoigne who a few moments ago seemed to be signaling from the bench that he needed to come off Paul Gascoigne of course missed in uh, Spurs match on Saturday with a groin injury and looked to be just labouring a little bit in the second half whether the sort of frosty surface has aggravated it I don't know but Stevie Hodge good opportunity for him to play a central midfield role which uh, is his best position really he plays that from Forest. And the substitution second one is finally been made by England Gary Pallister last appeared in Saudi Arabia replaces the captain Brian Robson reverts to Gary Lineker former skipper who's been pretty quiet not really his sort of match Stephen so 
England now playing with Mark Wright at the back. Walker and Pannister in front, and they can expect the fullbacks to push forward even more. Here's Ian Wright. He's had a bit too much to do. There's half a gap there, but he's trying to come across the second man. And he's fairly comfortably robbed. It was a bit unlucky there, because uh, if it had taken it on, the defender would definitely have got in with the tackle, and he did run foot him initially, but just lost his foot in just for a fraction of a second of the time, then he got back on the ball, it was blocked, but uh, I think right now, with his twisting and turning, uh, you know, the conditions aren't ideal for him, but I think he's done enough tonight to put himself forward uh, as a strong contender for the game against the Republic. Uh, I think he's shown very well, run intelligently and uh, linked up not bad with Gary Lineker because there were certain doubts as to whether you know they could play together as a pair but I, I think they've done quite well today. Top of the Geordie lads having a chat. Lineker, Hodge to his right, Stevie Hodge. Play on, says the referee. And Hodge will be very disappointed that he couldn't make that one count. Again, it was a good link up between uh, Gary Lineker, Ian White, right, right playing it to Lineker, who flicked it to Hodge. And that's Barnes, and a good stop by Bell. Little attack and Hodge wanting to make sure the first touch she was challenged from the other side. Stephen, a good match. Dixon. Oh, Bell's reaction said everything about that. Got a back flick, and he's well held. Two more Pallister. Uh, free kick has been given anyway. But the goalkeeper held it well under challenge. Mbou. Onana. Libby. Tato. Three on the edge of the area for Cameroon. Headed by Pallister. Barnes. The two Cameroon players left it. Right. Inside Anana. That's a good ball. Perhaps didn't curl as much forward as he might have wished. Dixon. Pierce. Taking on Pagal. Gets in the cross and wins a corner. Pallister in the same position as last time, but it's on the deck. Barnes. Pierce. Dixon. As he was in the first half. Well, that time he certainly was going for the shot. A little disappointed with the outcome. Yes, he hadn't made up his mind. That one was one that wouldn't come down quickly enough. Yes, good cross again from Pierce. Headed down and set up quite nice, to be fair. Just got underneath it. Uh, couldn't quite keep it in the angle. But uh, he's had a steady game, Lee Dixon. Really. Not the ideal match, to be fair, for Graham Taylor to come to any decisions, really, about seven weeks from now, the big match against the, the Republic. Uh, he's played, of course, with a sweep now since Gary Pallister came on, but one of the options he's got to decide on is to whether to go into that game with a flat-back four as he started this evening, or with the sweeper system. Five minutes left. England leading by two to nothing. Oko Tim here really is a possible replacement for the injured Makanaki but there has been 
no attack from Cameroon Seaman has had 18 clean sheets this season for Arsenal. This has got to be one of the easiest ones, but keeping his concentration and that of his defenders in the closing moments. Out by Hodge. Kunde. What's happened? All of our three players are in the England half. <laughs> And an O from the crowd. As he warms slightly the hands of Seaman. Pallister. Dixon as a hole and an offside verdict has been given and the odd flurry of snow Maintaining good record in the month of February. Five wins out of six matches played in this month. Only team to lower the flag for Holland. Nobody there. into the last two minutes Stephen Trevor Stephen certainly one of the uh, pluses of the evening well I think it's uh, an evening where Graham Taylor and England uh, have got to be satisfied 2-0 uh, um, not the greatest of, of games but uh, Cameroon didn't come here with a positive attitude they're quite happy now in fact um, amazingly enough to go off only having lost 2-0 and really I think Ian Wright uh, Trevor Stephen both have done well and both pushed for selection now in the Republic game uh, other than that of course Gary Lineker two more goals I think he quite enjoys playing Cameroon Barnes on the left for Pierce. And he chooses the moment to produce the worst cross of the evening. I think the feel of hot water is going to be very welcome for the players. too long excellent hurdle by Gary Lineker but the cross was too deep for him can't think the referee would allow too much time for stoppages but uh, Maybe Frank Dick will note this performance by Gary Lineker and Hurdling. Two nothing to England it is on 
on a bitterly cold night. Two more goals for Gary Lineker, as was the case on a warm night and a more important occasion in Naples. Takes his England total now to 39, puts him just 10 behind Bobby Charlton. 2 nothing. another victory for Graham Taylor's England. Graham, your verdict on the evening? Well, I mean, it was a comprehensive win for us, wasn't it? Uh, probably not all that easy because it would appear to me that uh, there was probably only one side playing to win. And that isn't always easy for the side that has to do that. And so, all in all, I'm pleased that we've got the international field back again. And it was a, com it was a comprehensive win, there's no doubt about that. Frankly, were you disappointed with Cameroon? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's difficult to actually make out exactly how they wanted to approach the game, but it looked as if they really had come, possibly, certainly not expecting to win. You're being very polite. I always am polite, aren't I? <laughs> Were there any lessons there for England, then? Oh, there's lessons all of the time that we're looking, in as much that it sounds a strange thing to say to people, but you can sometimes have too much possession and not do... Uh, enough with it and it's certainly in the first half the amount of possession that we had and were allowed to have we didn't turn it into uh, working the opposition penalty box enough but at times it is difficult because basically I mean they just drop back into their own half of the field unless you move the ball that little bit quicker then it is difficult to open them up early on in the game they wasted a lot of time they knock it back to the goalkeeper and get very frustrating um, but they didn't really come out because they didn't have to because it wasn't a World Cup game they didn't have to come and, uh, and attack because I think they were just worried about getting a good hiding so they just was basically satisfied with 2-0 with which really um, spoiled the occasion somewhat The pitch played very well I was very surprised with it uh, no complaints there eh? 88 caps the ambition is still there for the 100 Yes well hopefully uh, you know I played well enough uh, tonight for the boss just to consider me again And the Irish next, uh, next month? I'm sure that'll be a different type of game. They certainly won't play that way. Um, and I think we owe them one. 2 0, best we could hope for on a night like this. And Jimmy Hill, Terry Venables, you <laughs> clearly have a bit of sympathy for the players tonight. <laughs> you know, you feel such a fool without gloves, everyone's got them, haven't they? <laughs> it is the fashion tonight. We left the studio door open, I'm afraid. Infectious, aren't they, these fashions? <laughs> yeah. Now, normally, uh, the always, gloves, gloves are, gloves the gloves are off between you two, normally. Uh, Jimmy, conditions really uh, dictated the quality of that match tonight. Yes, the cold, but I must say that pitch was uh, exceptionally good in the circumstances. It was a, a pitch on which you could play football. Those that we see coming up might not be quite as good. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think anybody made a great reputation tonight, but I don't think anybody lost one either. So uh, a satisfactory result. We would have loved to have seen the Cameroons, as Graham Taylor said, um, have a go at England's goal, and then you get a proper game of football. 2-0, Terry. Let's take a look at the, uh, the key incidents that shaped that result. First of all, in the first half, the penalty incident with... Uh, Gary Lineker, fairly clear cut this. Yeah, the ball is played through to Trevor Stephen here, and uh, he collects it well, and it's a, an excellent uh, far, far uh, cross to Barnes, who's very underrated, I think, in the air. Gary collects it well, and the goalkeeper lost his place, and he does well, actually, to get a shot in at all. Enormous it, jump from Barnes. He does well, I mean, you, when it, there it is, and the goalkeeper is it's a certain penalty, Gary still gets an effort in, and uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, it's undoubted penalty. Penalty kick here, Jimmy, straight at where the goalkeeper indeed, was. Very unusual one, um, banking on the fact that goalkeepers okay. dive one way or the other, and he drilled that straight for the centre of the goal. Penalty taker's got to be a bit of a gambler uh, there. Now, a few minutes later, uh, Gascoigne and Lineker linking up well. That's right, Dixon plays a ball, and Gazza, his vision is excellent here. First time ball, I thought it was possibly one of the best passes of the evening. Terrific. And again, Gary's in, and... Uh, the defender, in actual fact, gets it first, knocks it back onto Gary's leg, can't see it so well from that angle, and uh, although it is a penalty appeal, I, feel you, I think he, he, does get the, he does get the ball. Now, in the second half, uh, second goal for Gary. Yeah, two, in fact, and Robson comes in, three unmarked at the back post, and if you unmark uh, Gary in that position, he's going to punish you. Lovely little flick, and he sees it home. One of those rare chances where a bit of space opened up. Uh, a few minutes after that, Steve Hodge, uh, uh, yeah. good move, another penalty Good claim. passing movement. When the professionals talk about first touch, it can be so important. Lovely little ball from Gary Lineker there, just flicked to the right. But you see Steve doesn't quite clear the ball away from himself and slows himself up, which gives the defender the time to come back and hustle him there. Mm. And that, that's why 
you know, sometimes it's a little bit boring with professionals. They keep going on about he's good at his first touch and whatever. It's the difference between a goal chance and not. It's half a yard, that's all, to stretch him out forward as against just having to hope there. I think that the important part is to, is to get it out of your feet enough yeah. without ne not letting it go onto the goalkeeper. It's, it's yeah. getting that happy medium to get it out of your feet so you're able to lift your head to see what's in front of you. Players we were, we were getting a first international look at really tonight. Ian Wright, what about uh, his performance tonight, Jimmy? We almost agree, but not quite on it. It's very difficult for a striker first time round, first international cap on a night like that. Um, he did reasonably well. He threatened to be dangerous at times and just didn't get the run of a ball on the byline to put over a dangerous cross. But, of course, the real problem for Graham Taylor is not whether he might become good in ten internationals. It's whether the important match coming up, he's ready to put in then. That's the question. From the international debut to international experience, what about Brian Robson tonight? I thought he did well again. I, I think uh, he played very well uh, for Manchester United on Sunday, and I think that's what really pushed him into this game tonight. And he and he.